Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 23733 Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Sunday, May 4, 2008. This report came to SCSO from Lloyd in Wisconsin. I would like to tell everyone about my uncle's experience with what he later called the primitive person of the forest. My uncle was a police officer and part-time private detective for Racine County, Wisconsin for well over 20 years. He was well respected and loved in his community and as a police officer. This all took place in 2002, 15 short years ago. One afternoon he had a fairly strange call from a local farmer that lived along the Root River in Racine County, Wisconsin. My uncle could tell the farmer was very upset. He told the farmer to settle down and tell him what was going on. He began to explain to him that he had a field with cows and calves in it and the calves were being stolen. At this time two were unaccounted for already. He asked if someone could come out to his farm to investigate and catch the people that were stealing his calves. My uncle set a time that evening to meet the farmer. He took his longtime partner Dean with him just in case there might be trouble. When they arrived the farmer walked them out to the field and explained his theory about what he thought was going on. The farmer figured someone must be pulling up to the back side of his fence line in the dark and putting the calves in a trailer or something like that. My uncle and his partner Dean decided to walk the perimeter around the field to look for any sign of activity or vehicle tracks that should have been left by these thieves. No sign of any human activity was found. They both thought it was kind of odd not to find anything knowing it probably would not be an easy chore to steal a couple of calves, especially in the middle of the night. They walked back to talk to the farmer, and the farmer explained he could not afford to have another one stolen. My uncle and his partner talked over what their next step should be, and they both decided to ask the farmer if he would be okay with them staking out the field from dark time and staying until morning if need be. The farmer said, absolutely. They pulled their squad card up along the field edge by a few small bushes, opposite from the road so they could clearly see anyone walking or pulling in. The car was also camouflaged enough so they would not be noticed right away. So my uncle and his partner sat near the car quietly having a conversation about family and friends to keep themselves fully alert. Approximately two and a half hours after dark they were startled by a loud thump that came from about halfway across the field. But he said closer to the field edge that ran close to the woods and the root river. My uncle whispered to his partner and said, Someone's out there. We will get them. Grab the spotlight quick. By now the cows and calves were in a panic and running to the opposite side of the field toward the farmhouse. My uncle grabbed the spotlight from his partner and hit the spot immediately. Now what they saw shocked both of them. Like my uncle said, he's not shocked by much because of his training and his experiences as a police officer, but this was different. What my uncle told me they were looking at clearly in the spot was a creature around eight feet tall, four feet wide at the shoulder, muscles that were so large that no man could even carry them, dark hair from head to toe and carrying a calf under its right arm. 
They both yelled stop, and when they did, it turned its head and upper body. Looking into the spot, it covered its eyes with its left arm for a second, turned and started walking toward the fence line. Now when it came to the fence, that was about four and a half to five feet high, my uncle said. It just stepped over it with ease. It didn't have to jump at all, still carrying the calf the whole time. They watched it walk into the darkness of the woods and a little ways down the hill until it disappeared somewhere along the river bottom. My uncle and partner looked at each other and said, What the F did we just witness? My uncle said, Well, it wasn't a bear or a human. That was a damn Sasquatch. There's no other explanation, he said. At that point, they were both shaking and in a state of shock. When they finally calmed down enough to drive, the, they drove out of the field onto the farmer's driveway and sat there not saying a thing. Dean finally spoke and, and asked my uncle, What the hell are we going to write on the report? They decided to write up the report saying that an unidentified animal was spotted and was the cause of the farmer's missing calves. Case solved. Now they did return to the farmer's home after working hours and told the farmer what actually took place. He was shocked but knew both my uncle and Dean and believed them 100%. They also told him if any more calves go missing to give them a call and no one else but them. The farmer did not call after that night. Maybe the Sasquatch moved on and after being caught by them in the field. No one really knows. After that life-changing experience, my uncle and his partner were true believers in what he called the primitive people of the forest. He told my family this story often and right up to tell them he passed away four years ago. My family and I all know to that these creatures do exist, knowing that my uncle had integrity and honesty. My uncle was lucky enough to experience another primitive person a few, few years after his first encounter while out hunting in the mountains of Wisconsin. But that is an experience that I can tell everyone about at another time. Thank you and God bless. Report number 58768, Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Thursday, December 28, 2017. Late night sightings by resident near two homes in the Macedonia area. Year 2017. Season, summer. Date, summer. State, Arkansas. County, Conway County. Location details right beside my house. I would say it had to have been running from across the road. It was just mouth dropping fast with no sound as it went by me and by the time I got light to look down a clear field area it was gone. Nearest town Hattieville. Nearest road 213 Old Hickory Road. Observed. My name is T.W. and I live in Arkansas. Before this happened I have never had anything ever happen to me. This happened in September 2017 at about 11 p.m. I am a night owl in the summer because it's too hot during the day to do a lot. I had just came from inside my house and walked down the steps. My truck was parked to my right and I was going to the storage room. As I turned a little to go around the front of my truck, something caught my eye side vision that made me turn my head. As I was turning my head, this big human-like figure was sprinting so fast it was like two seconds and it was gone. It had a dark undercoat and light colored on top hair. I have never in my life seen anything run so fast and what got me was it did not make a sound running past me. It was about 25 to 30 feet away in open area. If I had not caught the glimpse of it, I would have never even known he went by me. I can see why they can be around and even around a person and not even know it. 
also noticed I was checking on my stepdad that lives across the road from me, as I always do. Just as I walked up on his porch, I heard a noise at the other end as my flashlight was going up to that area. I saw this dark figure move, and this time I did hear it running. I only saw a dark brown figure move. Other witnesses, just myself. I was in disbelief what I had seen, but did tell my son and stepdad. Other stories. People think you're crazy. No one talks about stuff like that. This is only the third time I've told anyone. I've only told my son and my stepdad. There's been my dog and my stepdad's dog and neighbor's dogs that came up missing all within a, a period of a month. And they were very big dogs at that. My sister's 400-pound pig found it dead with big slashes all over it. This was all in a ten-year period. I'm sure if a person wouldn't be committed to the loony bin, more would talk. Time and conditions, night, but lighted very well from carport where my truck was. I saw it about two seconds beyond fast. It was a little humid. Environment, all forest around me, waterfall and deep forest areas. I have a barn about a hundred yards from the house. It was running in a straight path, so it would have been to left of the barn. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Tal H. Branco. I discussed the report with this witness on four occasions by telephone for several hours. As a result, it was apparent that his brief submission did not adequately address the situation or issues involved in this case. The following details and clarification should be noted. The animal that he first saw about 11 p.m. in September of 2017 was running and passed within 30 feet of him. Both he and the animal were on a mowed section of the yard. The area was illuminated by floodlights on the parking garage and storage room section of the home. The animal was seen clearly for only about two seconds as it was running at an unbelievable speed. It ran nearly fully erect, taking very long strides, and its gait was smooth and appeared effortless. It was described as being seven to eight feet tall with massive shoulders, large torso, and with a head that was something coned shaped at the top. T.W. said that as it ran, it was swinging its arms alternately in wide arcs. The witness noted that the figure's arms were noticeably longer in relation to its body than those of a human's. T.W. also stated that in the beams of the floodlights he could see that the hair closest to the animal's body was about two inches long and dark colored, but the outer coat of hair was lighter colored. He also noted the hair on its head and side of the face was thinner than that on the body. The animal never turned its face toward him, so he did not see facial features or reflections from its eyes. As soon as the figure entered the darkness behind the home, T.W. tried to run after it with his flashlight, but neither saw nor heard the figure. When asked, T.W. estimated the animal's weight to be around 400 pounds. After doing so, he again reiterated his amazement about the fact that an animal that large could run by him at such close range and he could not hear the footfalls. He said the animal never made a vocal sound that he could hear even after it disappeared from his sight. T.W. mentioned that he routinely walked across the road to his stepfather's house at night to check on him. On one occasion, as he walked past one back corner of the house, he heard a noise near the opposite corner. 
Before he could bring his flashlight up, he saw a dark brown figure running quickly and noisily into the nearby woods. He said there was no outside lighting that was turned on, so he could not provide any other description of the figure. In one section of his report, he very briefly mentioned the disappearance of dogs and the mutilation of a hog in the area. When asked about the hog incident, he said that about ten years ago, his sister, who lives in the area, obtained and reared a hog as a pet. The hog was kept in an outside pen from which it escaped at will, but never strayed from the immediate vicinity of the house or the outbuilding in which its primary food was kept. Table scraps were also routinely placed in the feed container inside the hog pen. Over time, the hog attained a reported weight of about 400 pounds. One morning, the hog could not be seen in the only areas it usually traveled. During a quick search of the property, the hog was found dead and mutilated about 40 yards from its pen. The location of the hog was in a straight line from the pen toward a heavily forested mountain area containing deep ravines and waterfalls. The hog's body showed deep slashes all over it. T.W. described the slashes as being at least one half inch wide and at least one half inch, inch deep gouges. In addition, it was noted that the hog's neck appeared to have been twisted to one side and one front leg was broken with the upper bone of that leg displaced at the shoulder joint. From the time of the hog's death to the time of, it, of this witness's sightings of the dark bipedal animals in 2017, he stated that at least five large dogs mysteriously disappeared from the general area. His German Shepherd, his stepfather's German Shepherd, a relative's Rottweiler, and two other large dogs belonging to area residents disappeared at various intervals during that period. All the dogs were reported to be very protective of their respective owners, their families, and their home sites. As he wrote in his report prior to his close encounter with the big human-like figure, he was a total skeptic about such an animal's existence. He stated his submission was primarily to alert others that such animals do in fact exist and stated that he now understands how the animals are able to evade humans. The person submitting the initial report, TK, is an unusually well-trained observer and a credible witness. This witness served 10 years in the U.S. Marines and was directly involved in the Desert Shield and Desert Storm operations. He later served as a deputy sheriff in both Arkansas and Mississippi and received extensive training and certifications in many aspects of law enforcement including criminal investigations. After being told the extent and details of the events he briefly mentioned in his submission and after investigating numerous cases of the unusual disappearance, injuries or death of livestock and pets in the rural parts of the southwest for many years, this investigator is reasonably certain that the general area described in the report has had a population of enigmatic bipedal primates for at least several years. These animals forage for food near the homes in the area when natural food sources are scarce. If dogs of any size challenge them during these foraging forays and do not retreat when approached, the dogs may be injured or killed. When dogs are killed by the enigmatic primates, the bodies may be carried away and thrown in inaccessible locations. The hog, which was found dead and mutilated, as described, was not killed by any large predator known to exist in the area of the U.S. described in this report. Report number 34043, Class Alpha. 
submitted by witness on Friday, March 2, 2012. Observation by a hunter through his scope by the New River Gorge Bridge near Fayetteville. Year 2007. Season, winter, month, November, date, day before Thanksgiving. State, West Virginia. County, Fayette County. Location details, New River Gorge. Nearest town, Fayetteville. Nearest road, Route 19. Observed. To keep it short, I was deer hunting in the New River Gorge in Fayetteville, West Virginia, and it was in 2007, the week of Thanksgiving. It was evening with about two hours of daylight left, and I noticed movement about 60 yards towards the gorge from my position. I raised my gun to view the movement through the scope. After holding it in position for 10 seconds or so, I saw a very large hand appear from the side of a large poplar tree. It was palm against the tree, and I saw fingers mostly. Then, to my surprise, I saw a head peek from around the large tree, and two large eyes affixed on a head if a creature I've never seen before. And I'm a hunter. Have been since I was eight. I'm now 38. The Bigfoot blinked twice while looking at me and then stepped back behind the tree. I viewed it for about 20 seconds while it was looking at me. My mind just couldn't figure out what it was and I knew what it wasn't. I had no desire to shoot it and very well could have, but my mind and body almost seemed to be in a state of shock while viewing it. I had to cross near the location on the trail out of the woods and I was effing terrified even with a loaded deer rifle. My hair stood on end when I realized that I would have to go towards the location to get out of the woods. I called my uncle as soon as I got to my jeep and told him, he believed me, I am a very honest man and would never lie about this. The thing is though, I never heard it run away or move through the leaves. And you can hear movement from 20 plus yards off in these woods. It's like it just disappeared. I came home very shaken from the experience, and it changed my life. Now I know that it is out there. It was very cool looking. About seven feet tall, it had very dark, large pupils. And around the pupils, its eyes were almost owl-like. It had brownish blonde fur, and it had a visible face. It almost looked like the troll faces that you used to put on your pencils as kids, really, but it was very clean looking and not what you would expect. Its fingers were long and thick with no fur and it had dark fingernails. I had my scope on nine power and it was equivalent to being around 30 feet from me visually. It was real and I would take a polygraph and swear on my life. Also noticed, no. Other witnesses, none I'm aware of. Other stories, I have heard of sightings in the gorge, but not recent. Time and conditions, about two hours before dark. Cloudy, 45 degrees or so. Environment, top of river gorge in mixed Mesopithic forest. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Russ Jones. I interviewed the witness who has multiple degrees from West Virginia University. He is a 39-year-old avid outdoorsman. I hiked to the area of the sighting and was able to see the New River Gorge Bridge. One thing I found interesting was the power line right away literally at the location of the sighting. It is believed that Bigfoots will often use right-of-ways as a path to avoid humans and be able to travel long distances in a straight line. In addition, the right-of-ways create a natural edge, which is a prime area for wildlife to congregate. The gorge area itself is very steep with rough terrain. Report number 51180, Class Bravo.
Submitted by witness on Saturday, February 13, 2016. Man recalls strange occurrences as a youngster in Weatherford. Year 1976. Season, winter, month, November, date after Thanksgiving, state, Texas, county, Parker County. Location details at the time Mr. J owned the property. It was at the end of the street across a cattle guard. It was a creek bottom and woods very secluded back then. Nearest town right on the outskirts of Weatherford. It is inside the city limits now. Nearest road Allen Street. Observed. Seen big dark something twice. I grew up on the east side of Weatherford. Born and raised on Town Creek which stretched from Sunshine Lake through Weatherford all the way to Anetta South. During the winter I trapped and hunted fur-bearing animals. One night on a weekend I was walking the creek hunting coons and came upon a part of the creek where we all swam during the summers. And remember a horrible foul odor that would take your breath away. I was shining my light in the trees looking for eyes and heard what sounded like someone fall in the water. But by the time we got to where the noise came from there was nothing. Only thing was the water was disturbed and kind of murky. I was 12 years old at that time and didn't think too much about it at that time. Now I think back to that time and one other incident and I know what it was. Also noticed a few days after that incident, the property owner stopped my buddy and I and asked why we had torn up the flood fence that crossed the creek at his property line. We told him that we didn't do any such thing and that the water was cold and over waist deep at that location. He still blamed us. We told him that the fence was not mangled and torn when we were there. That really made us wonder because whatever the being was it had come back on the same path and had tore up the fence in just a couple of days. Other witnesses? Yes. My best bud that I, I had went to school with from the first grade till we graduated high school. He was a shining light as I was. Other stories. Five years before on the same property my brother a neighbor boy and I all watched a dark object walk from the creek bottom across an open neck of field, step over a five strand barbed wire fence, walk over railroad tracks and disappear on the other side of the railroad tracks. We were several hundred yards from it and I remember all three of us shooting BB guns at it. I do remember that it did not even turn to look at us. We got home, told my parents, and got in trouble. They said we were shooting at a hobo. That wasn't a hobo, but my dad said there weren't any monsters. In 1972, time and conditions. It was before 10 p.m. and very dark. It was pretty cold because I remember wearing a coat, rubber boots, and two pairs of socks environment. It was creek bottoms and some woods with Mr. J having a couple of hay fields. It was country from the VY Dock Bridge all the way to Annetta South. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Gary Christensen. I spoke with a witness by telephone. He said that he had two or three encounters when he was a boy. The first occurred when he was six or seven in 1971 or 72. He and two other boys saw a large, hairy, biped step over a five-stranded barbed wire fence, walk over railroad tracks and disappear on the other side as he and the other boys shot at it with BB guns. He said that it was reddish brown in color and did not look back at them. Five years later, while coon hunting at night with a friend, the boys heard something very large fall in the creek. And two steps, whatever it was, made it across the creek another time. While camped on the creek, the witness and a friend experienced a rotten mud smell and heard large rocks being thrown in the creek. 
They also heard growls and a grunt that frightened them and they left. Other incidents included a tree that they found that had been uprooted and planted upside down. A rancher friend reported calves missing and a cow killed and its intestines pulled out. These incidences occurred in an area that has now become a suburb of a city on the outskirts of the Fort Worth Dallas Metroplex. I have investigated several historical and recent encounters in this area, but due to the fact that nearly all of the land is privately owned, permission to do night investigations on site have not been obtained. I found the witness to be very sincere and lucid about his experiences. I found him to be a credible witness. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.